Here in Clovis Unified, in order to access Adobe Spark, you're going to head into Clever. After you head into Clever, you're going to scoot down the screen just a pinch until you finally locate Adobe Spark. If it happens to be one of your favorites, you can click on the little invisible heart on the top right and it will save it up at the top for your favorites. If you ever forget how to sign into Adobe Spark, just scoot down to the question mark and then pause in that area. You may need to click on it. And when you click only on the question mark, you'll see this black box appear and the black box is telling you exactly what those login instructions are. Right here it says Mickey Mouse 001 at my.cusd.com. And that's a template that helps you understand how to put your own username into this email frame so that you can sign in using your login credentials. Go ahead and click on Adobe Spark one time. When you click on Adobe Spark one time, you'll come to the login screen that looks very much like this. On the right hand side of the screen where it says log in with school account, this is what you're going to click on. After you click right here where it says log in with school account, it's going to take you to this screen where you physically need to type your username into this space. I have provided a sample and I've already typed that here. It says Tabitha Jones 001 at my.cusd.com. Now friends, in this space right here, this is where you're going to put your own username into this space. So also make sure that you include all of the bits to the right where you have the at symbol followed by M Y period C U S D period C O M. And make sure that there are no spaces at all in your username. Once you have fully typed in your username, it looks very much like an email address. Go ahead and click the continue button one time. You may or may not see these two options appear on the screen. Because you are a student, it may authenticate you automatically as a student. However, as an adult, because I'm a staff member, I need to click where it says company or school account. Once you have logged in successfully, you come to the Adobe Spark landing page. Because I've worked in Adobe Spark for a few years, all of my hard work is accumulating in this space. As a student, when you come here for the first time, you might want to click where it says View All. Right up here on the top, and by clicking View All, what you're doing is you're viewing all of the potential templates that are available to you. What do these ready-to-go templates look like? And although some of them look far from what you want to achieve, simply look at where the text is located, how many images might already be in that template, or what the size might be. Those are some details that might help you get started. For example, if you want something that has nine blocks on it, you would choose something that looks like this. If you want something that maybe has three pictures on it, although this template only has two, you can easily, with the click of a button, add an additional picture to that template if needed. I'm going to start here with this sample just to show you how this resource works. And I was specifically looking for a graphic item. I did not want a web page. I did not want a movie. I specifically wanted a graphic. I'm going to click one time in order to open this. On the right hand side layout, it doesn't have to be the first place that you go to. But in your mind, if you have an idea that you want four pictures instead of two, it might be helpful to make that adjustment early on. As you scoot down in this space, you have the ability to adjust the current template that you have so that you can add more content if you feel like that is helpful. It starts off with a three frame. You have one, two, three frames. One, two, three frames. Maybe you still want three frames, but you want them to be located in different spots. By clicking any one of these samples, you have the ability to see what other frame options look like. And the more you click it, those items will jump around from one location to another so that you can see what that looks like. Now, 
maybe a three frame isn't what you're looking for. Maybe you would prefer a four frame and maybe you don't want them to be exactly tidy like this one. You want them to be offset just a little bit. All right, now that I have that in place, I know that my teacher wants me to make a science graphic. So maybe I wanna look for things that are related to frogs. Uh, and then I'll drop those pictures in first, and then I'll drop the text in next. In order to change one of these images, I'm gonna click directly on that space. I can click on a square and change it to an image if I wanted to. Right now I'm gonna click on an image and change it to an image. So I'm gonna click right up here where it looks like there's a mountain and a sun. And when I click the mountain and the sun, over here there are free images to choose from. So I'm gonna see if I can find some frogs. And there are frogs already here in this search query. And I can find a frog that's specific to my design. So let me click right here one time on this frog and it's gonna scoot into spot. And maybe you don't want it to be black and white. Over here on the right hand side where it says filters, you can take it over to none. So all of those vivid colors come back. If I want this image to zoom in or out, I clicked in this space in order for the menu over here on the right to readjust. And then I'm gonna make sure that I click right here and I can scale that if I need to. And I can also move it if I want to. So by clicking and holding onto it and then scooting over, I can re reposition that image if needed. I'm gonna come down here to the bottom right. I'm gonna click one time. I'm gonna click on that um, replace button, which looks like the mountain and the sun. I'm gonna come over here to the word that was already here. I'm gonna click to get rid of it. And then I'm gonna click on frog again because maybe the diet or the habitat, the environment. I'm gonna find another picture that's helpful for me. Let me go ahead and choose this one right here. It takes just a few seconds for that to come in and I don't want it to be black and white. I want those vivid colors to be on display. I'm gonna click on the right where it says filter. I'm gonna click right here one time for it to change color. I'm going to click right here in this gray space so that I have access to some adjusting tools. Oh, oh, and when I scale it, my frog completely disappears, which is okay because I can click right here and then I can scoot that frog over. Might be a little bit too big in my opinion. So I can scoot back down just a little bit for design strategies. I'm gonna offset it just a little bit. The Lily and Tyson words right here, those might be helpful, but I'm going to scoot it over and then in addition to scooting it over, I'm going to resize it. This is Clover, how did you resize it? There are little handles on the right and the left. And when I click on the little handle on the right and the left, that gives me the ability to make adjustments. If I want the font style, if I want the font color to change, then I'm going to use the font tools over on the right hand side. So I need to activate this space by clicking on it. So the computer knows that I want to make adjustments to the letters. And then over here on the right, I have the size uh, adjusting tool and I can adjust the size right here. I can also specifically choose a number inside of this font space. If I want to adjust it by the numbers, I can click into that space and then type numbers. And you'll see on the left-hand side how it's going larger and it's going smaller because it's responding to how I moved left and right when I was adjusting that. If I want the letter spacing to increase or decrease, I also have a button right here that allows me to make those adjustments. The line spacing, which is different from the letter spacing, if I want the text to squish together or I want it to separate, I can make those adjustments. The opacity means the see-through nature. If I want it to be quite muted or very vivid, I have the ability to do that. And the, the word order means if I want it to be behind something or in front of something. So if I had some additional shapes or some things on the screen and I wanted the, the letters to be in the very, 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 very front or in the back, then order would allow those things to move forward or back. Text is right here. Uh, the font style means that the shape or the angle or the style of those letters, and I can choose a font that will work well for me. Mrs. Culver, this isn't about Lily and Tyson. If I wanted to name the frogs the li Lily and Tyson, I, I could probably justify it, but I actually want those words to change. So when you double click directly onto those letters, then it will bring you to this editing space. And then I can erase those letters 
and then I can simply put frog for my title. And if it was a specific kind of frog, then you could say that it was a tree frog or if it's a bullfrog or whatever type of frog it might be. And then this button on the bottom of the box allows me to rotate. So if I want my title to be rotated 90 degrees to fit inside of this rectangle just a little bit better than I can, and I'm going to move slowly to get it to 90 degrees. I'm going to scoot it over into this space and we don't need to celebrate the engagement of anything. So I'm going to click right here and I want it to disappear so I can either use delete or backspace on my keyboard or I can come to the trash can right here. But I have to make sure that I've selected that item before I click the delete button so that it disappears. My teacher has requested that I have specific information about this animal. So I'm gonna click right here and I'm actually going to resize this. So I'm gonna grab that handle and adjust it. So that way I have more space in order to include some text into this region. And I just deleted the box about the engagement. So I'm gonna come over to the right hand side where it says add. I'm gonna click add one time and I'm going to specify that I want text to be added. So when I click text right here, I'm going to be given some options for what I want that word style to look like. Because it's not a title and it's going to be more information, I want to find this one right here where I have lots of text available to me at one time. When I click one time, I have several sen sentences that are all right there. And let me double click and get rid of all of this text in here because none of that is important to me. And now I can go in and I can add information. I can add... Ooh, I already have a typo. I'm going to use the arrows on my keyboard to get rid of unnecessary letters. I can add text into this space, period. I will add information here. I will check my work. Right, let's check for typos. When I do that, certainly my teacher is going to want me to put clarifying information that's specific, but if I did that, then you would just be copying my work and I don't want that to happen. So I want you to do the research on your own. And then you still have the ability to make adjustments, the color of the text, the type of the text, any effects or styles. If you click on style, it gives you a style wheel and you can scoot it around in circles to see the different types of styles that are available to you without having to think long and hard about what you want it to look like. You can stop right there and then leave it the way that it is. If you choose to make additional adjustments, you can come back over to shape or color or type. If you want it centered, if you want it off to the right, if you want it over to the left, there are several different buttons to choose from. I'm gonna click right back here in order to select the box because when I do that, I wanted to show you that you have the ability to choose other colors. If you feel that a different color is perfect for this space, then there are several color options to choose from. I would avoid light on light. So this light banana color on light letters is not helpful. If you want for there to be contrast so your reader can understand what you're trying to communicate, I recommend that there be a deeper contrast between those two colors. If you are doing research on a topic and you do not find any free images available for you uh, to clearly communicate the objectives of the lesson, another option is that you click on the plus symbol in order to open up a new tab and that you search for whatever it is that you are required to do for your class. And then when you right click on that image, you can save image as, and I recommend that you save it to your desktop or some other location that's helpful for you. So I'm gonna click desktop. I'm going to type frog and then enter. So now I have that frog image. Now, if I want to make sure that the image that I just brought from the internet is available inside of my project, I can add, I can add a photo. And instead of find free photos, which is where I was last time, I can click on upload photo. When I click on upload photo, I want to make sure that I head over to the desktop, that I choose the image that I just found from the internet, and that I click to add that. I can either add it to the collage or I can move it freely. By moving it freely, I can scoot it on the top anywhere along the top, 
if I were to choose add to collage, then it would add another space in the collage for that specific image. You'll notice that the image is here. I can move it freely as I see fit. If I've changed my mind, I can also delete it as an option. Let's pretend that I am ready to download this. I've checked my work. Oh, over here on the left, I didn't put my name. It's important that you put your name. So my name is Melissa, uh, and I'm also going to add the word frog. My teachers asked me to do a science project. So this is my visual demonstration of what I learned about insects or animals in our science unit. I'm gonna press enter on my keyboard now that I've had a chance to rename that. Over here on the right hand side, I'm going to download. I wanna download it either a PNG or a J JPEG. Either one is fine. Um, it honestly doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna click where it says start download. After I start download, Right over here on the left, it says my name and it says my project. All right, friends, now that I've downloaded my project, I'm gonna head over to Google Classroom. I'm gonna make sure that I'm in the correct assignment. And now I'm gonna click right here where it says add or create because I wanna add something that's on my computer. I'm gonna click on the word file right here so that I can add it from my computer. And the easiest way is to click right here where it says upload. And then I'm literally just going to drag and drop from right down there in order to upload that item. Now I'm going to show you what to do in case you, uh-oh, Let's pretend that you made a mistake and let's pretend that it disappeared from that bottom tray. If that happens, click add or create, click on file, choose upload, and now choose browse. I need to go to the downloads folder because typically when I download something from the internet, it's going to instantly go to the downloads folder. So right here where it says downloads on the left-hand side, you may need to ask a parent for help if needed for your specific computer. I'm gonna click right here where it says Melissa Frog and then I'm going to click right here where it says open. And that is the other alternative. If for some reason the item does not appear on that bottom tray, you would need to go to wherever that item has been uploaded. My teacher doesn't need two copies of the same thing. So I'm gonna click the X over here to get rid of one of them. And I can click the turn in button. After I click the turn in button, I'm gonna click the turn in button a second time so that my teacher officially knows that that assignment is finished. All right, team, thanks so much for watching today's lesson and have a great day.